everybody hi 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 welcome to today's video and on today's video we're gonna be talking to one of our own a kenyan who is a business owner a hospice business owner she has a company here hospice company doing so good and we're gonna be talking to her and tell us more about the hospice business and get being self-employed here in the u.s so guys come with me let's go inside and get to talk to her and get to know her more so yeah let's go out and talk to her and see what she tells us about the business so guys i'm here at christine's i'm gonna knock at the door so that we can uh, actually let me push at the doorbell and uh i'll do that again just just to make sure Hey, hi, I'm good. How are you? Welcome to my home. Nice to see you. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. You're welcome. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I'm so <laughs> wow, you have a beautiful home. Christine started her journey here in the USA like most of us. She had her goals and dreams, started as a caregiver to a CEO. She is now a successful entrepreneur and own a hospice company here in Arizona and Nevada. Her story will educate us and inspire us in a great way. Oh my goodness, Christine. I am so happy to have you. Welcome to Betty AZ YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, tell us about you. Who is Christine and where, where do you come from? Uh, and where are you based now? So my name is Christine Lewis mm -hmm. and um, I'm based in Arizona. Yes. I migrated to Arizona mm -hmm. when I was very young, yes. much younger, yeah. I would say. Mm. Um, I've not lived in any other states because mm. when I came here, mm. I fell in love with the with Arizona yes. so it's been good to me that's yes. what I tell people it's been good to me when I'm raising my kids I love you know what we have here I love the amenities yes. and also um, business wise it mm. has been very you know fair to me yes. so that's why I fell in love with Arizona okay um, coming from Kenya mm. um, my parents are, my shoshu is from Nakuru, yeah. Subukia, yeah. and my mom is from Kikuyu, Gawoto. Oh, Gawoto. I mm -hmm. went to school actually in Musagitao. Oh. I was raised a uh, PCA. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have fond memories of growing up in Kenya as a child. Yeah. Um, a lot of stories that I could give. So mm -hmm. yeah, I love my country, Yeah. you know, and I thank God for getting us to the United States of America. Yeah. Wow. So you guys, do you still go to the Gotor to see your show? show? Actually, I was there two weeks ago. Oh, That's the funniest were? thing. Yeah, oh. I was there two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I had my birthday there. Mm -hmm. um, it was in June. Yeah. So I was privileged to uh, celebrate with my cousins, mm -hmm. with my Shoshu and my Guka. So it was really good. Yeah. So, Christine, you're one of the people I know that you empower women so much. And like uh, the last time I saw you was in uh, we. It was an in event where you had Mother Ka Karua yeah. as a guest. And tell us about that, because uh, that was great. So um, it was a women empowerment forum yes. that we started with some other women. Yes. I normally tell people I'm who I am because of the strong women who are in my life. Yes. So starting from my grandma to mm. a very strong woman, yes. to my mom mm. and uh, to my other friends who encourage me, empower me. Because being an entrepreneur, yes. a philanthropist, trying to go ahead and make it you know, further in life, you yes. need strong women. Yes. And when I talk of strong women, I'm talking of women who have values. Yes. In terms of uh, God to yes. begin with, because I believe it all starts from our knees. Right. Um, uh, we have to be very prayerful. Yes. That's one thing that you know I love doing. My kids yes. and I we pray every morning. I'm up at three and all that stuff. Yeah. So um, I know I wouldn't be who I am first without God. Right. And secondly, without powerful women who have values, yes. uh, who encourage me, who pray with me yes. when I feel down, who are there to motivate me. Right. So we started that forum for that very reason. Mm. Um, it was a women empowerment uh, forum, yeah. and we were privileged to have Mother Karoa in attendance and yes. other celebrities. Yeah. Um, and um, we actually had 300 people in attendance. Yeah. So I thank God for that. Yeah, I was there. I saw that, and I was looking forward for more. Then, but I believe COVID hit and. 
and uh, we didn't have it one this year. So are you planning to uh, host this kind of events? So it's future? something that was planned for annually, yes. but of course COVID struck right after. Yeah. So we were not able to have more, mm. but it's something we are looking forward to. Um, yes. Hopefully next year we'll have yeah. our second one. Okay. Um, and I'm looking forward to empowering a lot of women. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I am. I am so glad to have you and telling, talking to us about this. Yeah, you know, I was thinking the whole time, and should I just, should I approach Christine? And, uh, you know, it was going in my mind, and I, I wasn't too sure if you're going to accept to be in, the, in my show, but I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm actually honored to be on your show, Betty. Yeah. I've seen the many great things that you're doing with your channel. Oh, um, okay. It's my prayer that it will continue growing and yes. you have more subscribers because yes. one thing Betty I've learned mm. is that what's meant for you is for you. Right. And what God grants you is right. already granted. Right. So I'm looking forward to seeing you grow this channel and yes. I'm looking to be right there with you, cheering you on because women are there to empower each other. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> this is a red wine. Oh, yeah. And um, it's super hot here mm -hmm. in Arizona. Like, it I think is. today we were like in the 90s or 100. Yes. And so I was thinking of how am I going to entertain this lady <laughs> that's coming uh, through? I'm and easy. So, oh, you're easy? Yeah. So let's Even drink. Even chai. And, uh, do you drink chai? <laughs> I drink chai. Yeah. Uh, but I, I figured you yeah. needed. Oh, right now cold. we don't need chai. Yeah. Right. So I didn't want to burn you up. I didn't want to burn you up. Yes. So um, oh, okay. I had to offer you something mm. at my home home yes and so um, that's why I thought maybe something cooler would yeah. really be healthy for you yeah under this heat okay thank you I appreciate this and uh, cheers to this and many more oh, many more very <laughs> many more yeah, yeah. so uh, let me see how do you look? Oh, it feels so refreshing. good refreshing yeah, I'm one, one of my favorite it's, it's hot out here yeah. so yeah <laughs> okay so Christine, you told us that you came here when, when you were in your 20s, right? Did you start business that time when you first came or uh, it's been a journey? Like, how did you start? So, I've always been an entrepreneur. Yeah. I've always wanted, um, I, I've always known that mm. um, I'm an entrepreneur. That's yes. what keeps me going. Yes. That's what I love doing. I mean, it's in my blood. Right. You know, that's my passion, I would say. Yeah. So when I came to America, I had already graduated with my first bachelor's degree. Yeah. Yes. And um, when I got here, mm. um, the norm, yes. of course, it's a new place. Right. Um, you have nothing. Yes. Um, someone made uh, a, a, a joke one time. Yeah. And they said most of us who come to the U.S. Mm. it's like being born. Yes. The way you come to this world with nothing. With na right. That's how practically, other than your suitcase. Right. That's all you come with. Yeah, and your so few I, clothes. I did have my knowledge. Yeah. I had my credentials. Yes. But I had to start somewhere. So right. my first job was like I was a caregiver. Oh yeah. Um, and I remember mm. it was a ten-bed home. Yes. And um, I was, I knew it was my stepping stone. Mm. I knew I was only doing it for some time. Yes. Because there's a reason why we all come here. Right. And um, for those who come here and you have that self-drive, you right. affirm yourself because it's a lot of affirmations every day. Yes. Um, life at times will boot you down, mm. it will kick you down. But I knew that mm. what, where I was heading was yes. much greater than where I was. Right. So I had to humble myself and yes. I worked as a caregiver. Yes. And then um, within a few months, mm. I, I, I got hired. Mm. Um, I went back to school. Yes. And I got my CNA, my right. certified nursing assistant. Right. And at that time, mm. I started feeling the, the urge. You know, yes. now I need to even do better. This yes. was my first certification, actually my second certification. Yes. Because my first certification was, mm. you know, as a caregiver. Caregiver. Here mm -hmm. I am now, I have a board certified. Because then, yeah. at that time, Betty, I don't know if you were here. <laughs> yeah. But as a caregiver, you didn't have to go to board certification. Yes. But now we do have to get our board certification. Yeah. So, uh, my first board certification was as a CNA. The CNA. So, mm -hmm. I worked three mm. jobs. Yeah, three jobs? Three jobs. Yeah. So, I would go to one of the facilities, which wow. is a big facility. Mm. It's a rehab center. Yes. And I would work there three, ta three times a week. Yes. And then I had a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. And then I had <laughs> another 
another you know, CNA job full yeah. time. Oh my goodness. So basically I used to sleep like four or five hours. Oh my. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I did that yes. was because I wanted to make sure that I had my own savings going. Right. Because I wanted capital to mm. start my own business. Yes. And so um, I remember one time mm -hmm. I was I drove sleep like I slept driving driving <laughs> and I got yeah. to my job to mm -hmm. clock in I was like it's 3 a.m. Oh and yet my I was goodness. supposed to be there at 6 a.m. because I had gotten on this drive you yes. know of waking up busy 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 mm. at that time I didn't have children yes and so you know all I did was work, was work. I would pack my sandwiches and yeah. lock the door and you know? and sometimes when you come here like you don't have a, a lot of friends or sometimes mm -hmm. you don't even know anyone you so you are into work uh -huh. So um, mm -hmm. I worked three jobs yes. and how I, I had um, my finances organized mm. was that one of the paychecks mm. would cover my bills. So yes. one of my full-time jobs would cover Just my bills. The bills yes. I had a small one-bedroom apartment at the time yeah. and so I knew one paycheck would cover my... And okay. then the other two paychecks mm. from the one-on-one -on -one job and the other job, yes. uh, which we call double, yeah. because I would go on Friday yeah. and stay there up to, you know, yeah. Sunday. So like a live-in? No, no, no. It mm. was they call it like uh, those long shifts yes. in the rehab yes. centers. Yes. So I would work that job mm. and uh, those two jobs yeah. I started saving money. Wow. Those were my savings mm. and then I had the full-time job that yeah. would cover you know my bills. Yes. At that time I had a small car, a mm. Chevy Cobalt. Yes. You know I bought it old so the payments were at a minimum mm. and um, so I was able to save at least 25,000 wow. at the time. Wow. And um, I saw an advertisement, mm -hmm. um, someone was looking for a manager yes. for a group home, it yes. was a 10 bed group home, mm. and it was in Phoenix, mm -hmm. so I was like, wow, this mm -hmm. is my, it just spoke to me, Yeah. and I normally tell people, mm. we all have our own talents, yes. Betty, yes. and um, just like a musician mm. can sing and strike a chord and, mm. and do all that, in business, mm. I feel you you have your own talents, right. especially if you're, you're you're an entrepreneur and and that's your passion. Right. So I normally tell people before I, I invest in a business, mm. it has to speak to my heart. Right. Because the first thing I do, I take it to God and pray about and it. And I yes. pray about it. Yes. And right. if I feel it speaking to my heart, yes. then I know God has ordained that business right. and it's going to thrive. Yes. So I walked into this group home for the interview. It was yes. a, an Asian family. Mm. There was a daughter, mm. a father and a, and a mother. Yes. And so we got talking about the home. Mm. It was a home that they bought. They flipped it to a group home. Yes. And um, we talked about it and I was super desperate. Yes. And I had no idea how to <laughs> start a group home. Right. I had no idea what policies and procedures are. Wow. I was all by myself. Yes. But I was confident and I was with God. Yes. So I walked in there mm. and um, they interviewed me. Mm. Initially, mm. they wanted a manager. Oh, wow. But by the time I was done, mm. they told me they were going to give me the home. Mm. I give them whatever I could manage down. Yes. They were going to give me the home mm. and I was going to run it as mine. And all I needed to do was pay rent. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And so, you mm. know, I, it was just a revelation that that's where I needed to be. And the yes. house was already furnished. So all I needed to do was move in. Wow. and learn the business That's and manage blessing. my home. Yes. So, of course, through the hurdles mm. and everything, mm. I had to do a lot of, you know, Google. I would stay up all night at times. Yes. And um, I remember mm. my first clothes, mm. whatever I wore, mm. to meetings, looking for patients and stuff. Yes. We would go to calls mm -hmm. with my brother, Yeah. get the outfit, mm. and then we would take it back. <laughs> because we couldn't manage to buy clothes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't have we any money. Couldn't afford to, yeah. Yeah, so right. he would tell me, Christine, you, are, you have a meeting, mm. you would go get, you know, a dress for me, I would yeah. wear it for the meeting and then we would send it back. Right. So that's how we started. Yeah. Um, so through God and his grace, yes. I was able to fill up my home eventually. Okay. It didn't come easy. Mm -hmm. It didn't come easy. Yeah. Um, but I learned the business mm. um, on the job. Yeah. I was the caregiver. I was the marketer. I was the chef. I yes. was everything. Everything. But so I, you did it yourself. I did it myself for a very long time. Yes. Uh, because at that time, mm. my younger brother was a security guard. Oh my goodness. So he would make around $500, $600. Yes. And that's what we survived on yeah. until our business picked up. Picked up, yeah. And so through God's grace mm. and through a lot of praying and you know just keeping at it, not yeah. giving up. Yeah. Eventually we had ten beds. Mm. 
and um, we started now specializing with native Indians. Wow. So, to be honest with you, mm. I had a gentleman there who would pay me once a month, mm. he would pay me $9,000. For oh the my. assisted living. Yeah. So that alone was mm -hmm. enough to cover my, you know, my so rent. So that's like private care? Yeah, private. Private was a young, patient. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. $9,000. Yeah. That's good money. Yeah, so yeah. that was enough to cover my payroll. Because yeah. after, eventually I added one more girl. Yeah. She was my caregiver. Mm. And then we started now enjoying America. I would yes. say that's when I arrived. <laughs> you know, that's when I arrived. Yeah. And mm. then, um, so I kept on going. Mm. And um, there's a lot to it. But, you know, through, again, Keeping up, I ended up owning six group homes, all Yo. ten beds. Oh wow! So eventually, I had sixty patients, mm -hmm. and uh, God was gracious, and that's wow. how I started my first business. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So, so for somebody dreaming to do it, they can. You can do go it. Go for it, and you can do you it. You can do it. Wow! Nothing, nothing stops is you. Mm -hmm. Nothing stops you. Right. Nothing stops you. You only stop yourself. Wow, Christine, yeah. you are truly a go-getter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what you do right now is it uh, is it health like um, home health or what 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 is it? Can you tell us more of what you do right now, the business? So, you do? Um, Betty, you know, like I said, there has been a lot of tribulations. Yes. Um, nothing comes easy. Mm. And so in 2013, mm. um, I was pregnant with triplets. Yes. And group homes are not easy either. Yes. Because to run a successful business, I feel you have to be hands-on. Right. And um, it's like your baby. Mm. And so my first children were triplets, three yes. boys, and wow. I lost two. Oh, I'm sorry. So no, one no. of them passed away mm. um, within 27 hours of birth. Oh, my. And then the other one passed away one year after birth. Oh. Um, and um, at that time, I knew I wasn't able to emotionally, physically, yeah. after being in the hospital for such a long time, mm. watching my son fight for his life. Yes. Um, and then I had now the one who is mm. seven years old, thank God, yeah. um, who I needed to take care of. Mm. Um, I figured I needed to sell the, the group homes. Yeah. And, you know, just let it go. Yeah. Take time off, figure myself out. Right. And so I put my assisted living homes to sell. Yes. I made a profit out of it. Yes. But during that time, mm. I saw another side of life, which yes. is death and dying. Right. Um, until you lose someone you really love or someone very close to you, mm, you really you don't know, know what death is. Right. And I think the reason why I, I made it mm. was because I had very good nurses, I yes. had very good doctors, mm. and um, who we ended up very, being very close till today. Yes. And so that's what encouraged me to, to mm. getting into hospice. Yes. So right now I specialize in hospice care. Yeah. I do have a home health, mm. but I would say my main business is hospice. Yes. Um, we are based here in Arizona, mm. and we also have another hospice mm. in Nevada. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you have another company in Nevada? Yeah, that's our baby. We oh. just started a, another hospice in Nevada. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that not too too much for you when you are here? You're still here in Arizona? Or <laughs> Remember I told you, yeah. you can only limit yourself. Wow, this so, girl. <laughs> um, I go to Nevada every Thursday. Yeah. I fly in and out. Mm. So. Before my kids wake up, I'm gone. Mm. But by the time they go to bed, I put all my kids to bed yes. and we pray together. So I thank God that I'm able to fly back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with this, uh, with the, can you tell? Because some of the viewers they might be watching and they don't know what hospice is. Mm -hmm. And um, I know, like in Kenya where we come from, there is hospice, but not everybody who is uh, who knows what hospice is exactly. Could you please tell us what hospice is? So I love to sum it up mm. um, when I talk to people about hospice mm. because at one time in the valley we were said to be angels of death. That's yes. not what hospice is. Yeah. Um, basically hospice deals with the terminally ill, yeah. those patients who have six months or less to live. Yes. And you have gone to the hospital mm. and the doctors have told you there's nothing else we can do for you. Yes. So hospice is mm. all about comfort. Comfort, yeah. Giving people not quantity of life. Mm. We don't lengthen your lifespan, yes. but giving you quality, yes. quality of life. Yeah. And how we do that mm. is once you are referred to us, mm -hmm. we have a team of, you know, clinicians. Yeah. 
um, who come in mm. and they make sure that from your medications to symptom management to social work to mm. family because we don't just you know focus on the patient we yeah. focus even on those people that you love the family the family yeah. your friends mm. your support system you, yeah. the group homes yeah. because this is it, it entails and you know it kind of uh, ruffles everyone it, yeah. it hurts everyone you know to lose a, a loved one right and the other thing I realized mm. is that dealing with the terminally ill mm -hmm. even the family is affected right right because you watch through you watch these people going go through, the, through. the dying process yes. and the, the disease process yeah and, and it can really drain you mm. so within hospice we also offer um, we try to offer balanced life for right. other than just comfort mm. we try to also deal with the family by giving them breaks through something we call respite care yeah so through respite care we are able to you know if a family member wants to take a vacation for four days for yes. example we are able to relieve them mm -hmm. take care of the family member mm -hmm. they are sure that this family member is in great hands yeah they take a break and then they come back and deal with the patient or okay. their family member okay mm -hmm. yeah. so do you guys offer like cancer for the family members like if they want uh, to, yes, we do. to somebody to talk to once you get into hospice care mm -hmm. we take over everything we support you through everything mm. and um, Betty what I can tell you mm. qu quality of life is very important it is and yeah. if I was to talk to anybody mm. I would say life is for the living yeah right and you need to enjoy your life don't focus on I'm here for 100 years right. or 120 years mm. focus on right now right make it good right now right now that right, right now, now don't living. don't wait till tomorrow that is true if there's some you love to go hiking go hiking if that's what hospice has taught me yeah and so what we do with the family members we support them mm -hmm. uh, you'll find people who have um, family grudges or you know uh, wealth that has not been well allocated mm. or things like that yes. so our social worker mm -hmm. through, through their expertise and their training they are mm. able to help with the paperwork like the will, mm. you know, the power of attorney yeah. and things like that. So it really blends in well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where, where are your patients based? Are they in a, like a ho like in hospitals or the, in their homes? And uh... So we do have something we call in-house hospice okay. um, care, which is where now when the patients need even more aggressive treatment, like mm -hmm. for example, um, if they need like... Um, Things that we cannot do at their homes yeah. where they are able to go and get that kind of treatment. Mm. But uh, most of our patients, I would call it we are hospice outpatient hospice. Yes. Because remember, mm. it's quality of care. So right. you find that most of these patients mm. want to die in the comfort of their homes. In their, with when their that families. last day comes, they mm. want to be surrounded by their loved ones. Right. And so we encourage that these patients, when they are referred to us, they stay at home mm. and we are able to go to their homes. So to answer your question, Betty, we take care of these patients wherever they are, Where their it? residences, assisted livings mm. and all that. The only place we don't go to is hospitals because then they have that care there. So you guys kind of, when you now that you have the company, do you guys, uh, pro, like you provide the, the equip, all the equipments needed to make them comfortable at home, like the beds or? So like I said, when we go in, we provide everything. Yeah. We are gracious because um, here in the United States, mm. we are paid by Medicare. Oh, so okay. Medicare reimburses everything. Oh. And so at, at, when we take care of a patient, we're mm. able to provide them with the supplies they need, okay. hospital beds, which mm. we call durable medical equipment. Mm. So we're able to give them, you know, everything that they need from, you know, out quotes and quotes diapers but mm. they're not supposed to be called dry diapers yeah, we briefs. give them briefs mm. we give them chucks we give them lotion we give them from you know a to z we give them dmes which mm. is uh, anything to aid their comfort mm. wheelchairs you know commodes mm. and beds hospital beds and all that stuff yeah mm -hmm. and now from your experience do you find uh do you come across families that are and you know like uh, finding it so hard to put their loved ones into hospice because you know some people when they think of hospice they feel like oh is this gonna rush death for you know it's the word death and mm -hmm. end of life it's mm -hmm. so hard for, for a lot of people to you know uh, so what's your experience do you a lot of families struggle to so I would say fortunately mm -hmm. when a patient comes um, to us mm. sometimes most likely the physician or their doctor oh. has already talked to them. Oh, okay. And um, I would say the families 
have come to the resolution as hard as it is yes. that this is the best time to put our mom or our dad or my brother or sister mm. into hospice. Mm. And so it's it, we do have to do a lot of counseling mm. as we go. Yeah. Um, we do have to hold their hands because they need it. Yeah. But most of them have come to that resolution that it's about time that you know I get more help that I need, the help that I need. Okay. Yeah. So what as a business person, what what are the challenges of? Uh, I know every business has its challenges. So what are some of the challenges that uh, one can face when you are when you're doing a business like this or? So, as a believer, mm. I don't like talking about competition. Right. Because I believe that the door that God opened for me yes. is mine. Right. And, I, you know, whenever I talk to people about, because I get a lot of people asking me questions mm. on um, how, how did you start up. And, you know, I go ahead and counsel people about business and um, encourage them. Yes. You know, um, I normally say in the valley right now, in mm. Arizona, mm. to be precise, we mm. have so many hospices. Right. So there's that challenge of, you know, um, referrals. Rares. But I thank God because we have done well over yeah. the years. Mm. I've been running this company for more than 15 years. Wow. And so um, mm. I would say, you know, the challenges are really marketing. That's yeah. where we put, you know, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and also finding the right employees. Because yeah. I believe that um, to be in hospice, you have to be a special someone. Yes. And you really have to have the empathy, mm. you know, of the death and, and you know, of death and, and what people go through. Yeah. And, at, and because we go and see these patients at their homes, mm. some of those homes are not so good. Yeah. And, you know, your standard is not my standard. Right. But because I have gone through it for a whole year. Yeah. When my kids were in the hospital, mm. I was there for a whole year. Yeah. And I can tell you there's nothing that breaks your finances, mm. breaks you as a human being, mm. as a terminal illness. Right. Because really, I think it even takes God that I'm still able to smile mm. and, and live my life. Right. Um, during that one year, I couldn't work. Mm. I couldn't even clean my house because mm. from 8 to midnight, I would be at the hospital. Oh, yeah. So when I talk to my nurses, mm -hmm. because I've gone through somehow the same process with mm. my son, mm -hmm. Um, I tell my nurses, do not think of yeah. how dirty that house is. Yeah. Think of what you can do to make it better. To make it because right. Because if this person wasn't ill, mm. probably that house would be much more sparkly yeah. than your house. Yeah. So when people come and complain of how messy a house is, it mm. really breaks my heart. Right. Because I, I feel that that's not the right person to be in my yeah. company. Right. So to be in my company, mm. um, we do have something we call our company culture yeah we do have a culture that yeah. i implemented mm. and that that culture emphasizes on teamwork yes and also the the empathy and the sympathy mm. and how to coordinate yourself and conduct yourself when you're dealing with people who are going through this process mm. and so there are there are people who would come to my company mm. and i just feel you're not a good fit right because probably you do not promote what i believe and what my beliefs are that that's true yeah because it's uh it's you know like uh, being in healthcare is it's not for everybody no. need you to have the heart for it yeah. and also the heart for and especially mm. like hospice is very sensitive when exactly. you are dealing with family going mm. through this psychological and everything mm. so uh, what would you like to tell somebody a viewer maybe uh, watching this and may think of starting a business like hospice mm -hmm. what are some of like the requirements what are you needed to have to start this so to be a hospice director mm. of course you have to have the education yeah uh, this is a very sensitive line of work yes uh, because medicare scrutinizes you more yeah um, there are things that i wish i had known mm. before getting into hospice yeah but over the years i went back to school mm. um, because i felt the urge to educate myself more yeah i've attended a lot of workshops you know i had to really invest in myself right as a person in order to really understand what hospice is yeah not to say that people cannot do it mm. I did it anybody can do it mm. but um, due to the laws and the reg regulations mm. and being under the federal guidelines mm. um, because you know we have the state and we have the federal mm. so we go by the federal and yeah. we also have to go by the state mm. I had to go back to school and I did my master's degree in healthcare law okay um, just so that I would know more about yeah. you know our operations and yeah. budgeting and 
the requirements, the federal guidelines and taxes and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so you have to have ex uh, experience mm. as an administrator right. of such a, a healthcare institution. Yeah. Um, you have to have the education yeah. um, to run such a healthcare institution. Mm -hmm. And to me, I normally tell people more than anything, mm. you have to have a passion for it. Yeah. That's what really matters. Yeah. Okay. If you have the passion for it, you can get okay. and do anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. It's nice to hear that and I'm so glad mm -hmm. because now I'm getting even, um, you know, this topic is very informative and mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are, are going to benefit out of this mm -hmm. and we are very proud because you are you are Thank Kenyan you. and I'm Kenyan. When I see somebody like you, you are you are an, a role model, you know, you. and a lot of girls watching you and they're young mm -hmm. wanting to come to the States. Mm -hmm. You can see Christine have done it. You can do it as well. Exactly. So what would you like to tell, you know, like a but in short, what would you like to tell uh, somebody who is dreaming to come into the United States of America? This is the land of milk and honey. So what I normally tell young people mm. or anybody that I talk to, mm. um, the first time I ever went to the embassy, mm. we never had appointments. Yes. I was very young oh, yeah. and I remember we had to go there very early in the morning, mm. as early as 4 a.m. Yes. Because it was a first come, first, first serve basis. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. And I remember the first time we went there, it was raining. Wow. And we went with a pastor. Mm. So my parents were already here and they were trying to bring us here sooner okay. without going through the immigration process. Oh. Um, so now when I look back, mm. I normally give an example with that. Yeah. Looking at all those people that had queued that morning, I know. not everyone got got a visa I know for God to have granted you a visa and I'm not mm. saying it's a huge thing it's a to me it's a huge thing. it is a huge because thing. I wouldn't it's be gone. living like this right. if I was in in Kenya right um, I thank God that he has placed me where I am yes um, when I look at my experience mm. I tell people for God to have handpicked you mm. to get on that plane right. 24 27 hours mm. bring you to the United States yeah you need to really look at that as grace yeah and as an opportunity yes and what I see mostly is not that people are not smart yes. it's not that people are not hardworking mm. actually Ke Kenyans are one of the most hardworking you know population we, of people we are um, yeah. who are known yeah um, it's only that sometimes mm. as human beings when we come here mm. we we tend to really because yes. you have the comfort, the basic, mm. um, you know, basics of what you need to feel oh. comfortable and live comfortably. Yeah. I tell people refuse to be comfortable. Right. You did not come here to be comfortable. No. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to to come on vacation, mm. you'd have gone to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You'd have gone to to any, mm -hmm. you know, uh, vacation. Yes. Uh, destination. Yes. I normally tell people mm. when you come here, God gave you that honor yes. so that you could probably even make your fellow Kenyans back at home great. Yes. Uh, so take that opportunity mm. and really focus on who you are. Yeah. Focus on what you want mm. and keep on going. Okay. America tends to intimidate people. Yeah. Do not get intimidated. Right. As long as everything you're doing is legal. Yes. As long as everything you're doing is harmless mm. um, to yourself and to others, yes. go for it. Go. Yeah. And we saw Obama become a president. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody can make it in this country. It's right. really, I can tell you, it's a land of opportunity. Right. So people need to grab that. Mm. And I normally tell people before anything else, mm. ask God first. Because right. he gives you the best answers. Yes. Ask God first and yes. then follow whatever direction he points you at. Okay. Now, well, my other mm -hmm. um, motivation is to women. Mm. Because to be honest with you, women are a backbone to be yeah. in their homes. Yeah. Backbone in their countries, mm. in their towns. Mm. I normally encourage women mm. um, to really empower themselves. Yes. Um, because once you're empowered, mm. we are all empowered. Yeah. Women should support each other better. Mm. Um, because I feel that it's true, women are we are our own poison. Right. Um, so you need to pat your fellow women's back when yes. they do well mm. in business, in their careers, mm. in, in education. Mm. You know, lift each other up. Because when women are powerful, mm. the world becomes even more powerful. That is true. And much more um, a better place to live in mm. for our children yeah. and for our generations to come. That's true. So when I when I talk to women mm. I normally tell them regardless of how small your business is yes. it lights up the whole world that is true. Knowing. yeah yeah wow
Thank you so much, Christine, you. and uh, thank you for the time and giving us the information. I appreciate you and our viewers. Please write on the comment section, tell us what you think about, um, about uh, hospice and tell us about uh, what you think about everything that Christine has talked to us about. Type on the comment section, let's interact, let's share more. So God bless you so much for watching and take care of yourselves. You can say goodbye to our and viewers. And please su subscribe yeah. to Betty <laughs> AZ. Yes, Betty AZ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take care guys, goodbye.